All right, what is up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Sonic Ranger. Welcome back to Beacon Pines. I'm getting right into it. I'm not wasting any time. I am on the case. Especially since I saw the title of this, and now I'm really curious. The kids spent the rest of the afternoon combing through dusty piles of old county records, desperately searching for anything that could help them make sense of Mr. Tolliver's cryptic utterance. Luca tried to shake the thought of Grand's basement, but his focus wavered. Explosives. Messages hidden in jam, dossiers on various town figures, and a corkboard threaded with photos. Gran was the only family he had left. He still couldn't bring himself to believe the worst. But the old map with the symbol of explosives in Town Square made that difficult. As the sun began to set, the kids were no closer to the truth. That sucks. If I have to read any more records, my eyeballs are gonna pop. We have to keep digging. If I dig another word, I'm gonna end up in one of these asinine death records. Rollo Carter lived a full and wonderful life till he read so much boring crud that his brain oozed out of his ears. Rollo shut his book with an assertive nod. If you've got a better idea, spit it out. You sound like my sister. Keep pushing your luck, pal. And it won't be boring country records that kill you. I'll put you in the obituaries myself. Rollo muttered under his breath. You're a Cone County record. Really? That's the best you've got? When I'm done with you, you'll be in the footnote in history. Just like... Beck slammed her finger down on the open page before glancing down to read. Jay Hartford here. I'd love to see you try. Hey, hey, hey! We'll, we're all a little tired here. Let's just take a minute and... Something tickled the back of Luca's mind. Wait, what was that name, Beck? In the obit, obit? J. Hartford. From the Brookville Tribune, eight years ago. That can't be right. What is it? Isn't that the name that was on the name tag? J. Hartford. What the? Oh, I did hear. I swear I can't remember nothing for my save my life. That's my grand's name. Jupiter Hartford. Maybe there are two J. Hartfords? Mrs. Hartford is survived by her young daughter, E. Hartford. My mom's name is Eleanor. Okay, this is getting creepy. So it's not his gran at all. Somebody else is pretend- I just had a thought. I am... Not sure if I want to say it out loud and spoil it for you guys, because I think I figured out what's going on. I'm just saying. I think I figured it out. I'm just going to spell it, because... And if you don't want to know, just go play the game yourself, because I think I figured out the secret with Gran. Alright, you've been warned. I think Gran is Eleanor. Like, I think it's his mom all along, because she disappeared and then Gran showed up to take care of him. And it seems that some Gran just has this absolute vendetta against the company. Almost like the company killed her husband. And she's willing to work with whoever she can to get revenge and finish what he started in finding the truth. And seeing as Juniper is in fact dead based on the obituaries, I think it's safe to say Eleanor is in fact alive and she's the one pretending to be... be Gran. Okay, this is getting creepy. Mm -hmm. If your Gran is six feet under, three towns over, ah, title. Roll credits. Then who am I living with? The question hung With your mom, because we haven't actually seen his mom and I was wondering why we haven't seen her. And seeing as Juni Juniper is her... That would explain why she gets so uncomfortable with people, guy flirting with her. But, um, no, it would just kind of make sense. I mean, family resemblance can cover for a lot of stuff if you don't actually know what the person looks like. Alright, yay, I gotta close up for tonight. Beck rubbed her eyes. How late is it? Almost ten. Oh crap, Paul's gonna kill me. I gotta go! Yeah, my parents will be worried sick. Okay, let's meet up as early as we can at the festival tomorrow. What are you gonna do about the unconscious man in your basement?
basement. I'll think of something. Luca's heart was pounding as he approached the house. If he was lucky, Gran, or whoever it was, hadn't gotten back yet. And of course, there was Mr. Tolliver tied up and unconscious in the basement. Dealing with him would be the first order of business. Luca shook out his arms to calm his nerves before entering. Oh. Wow, that music. He held perfectly still, tempering his breath and listened that closely. That music. Freaked me out a bit there, man. She was asleep. His only hope was that she hadn't found Mr. Tolliver before dozing off. How are you gonna get it open now that you're by your Oh, it's already open still. Yep, he's not here. Well, she... Oh, no. Mr. Tolliver was nowhere to be seen. Maybe he woke up, escaped from his bindings, and left without a trace. Or maybe Gran knew everything. What do I do? Luca's hungry stomach groaned, not realizing it, he'd gone the entire day without eating. Okay, I can figure this out. Just need a little brain food. Luca rushed over to the pile of jam jars, unscrewed one, and shoveled a handful into his mouth. I'm afraid your jam delivery will be delayed. He flipped the lid to read the label. Mr. Nun Creed? <laughs> okay, now I can think. So if Gran knows we've tied up Mr. Tolliver, I'm screwed. If she doesn't know, then I need to play it cool. I guess the only option is to go to bed and act as if nothing is wrong. Gran will think Mr. Tolliver finished what he was sent to do and left when he was done. stare, the emotion of the day dragged heavily on him. With each consecutive step, his legs weakened. Uh-oh. His stride oh, began crap. to falter. Was she trying to poison Mr. Nuncreed? He tried to grab for the railing to steady himself. Something was wrong. Come on, legs. Just a few more steps. Luca groaned and tried to move. His Has limbs might as well have been bolted to the ground. Poisoning Mr. Nuncreed? We're trying to. Through numb lips, he mumbled just before falling asleep. Well, he went to sleep. Or is it a sleeping stuff for him? Sweet boy. What did you get yourself into? Oh boy. Rest now and let me handle everything. Okay, it's so not poison. Chapter 9. We've reached chapter 9, guys. A speech to end all speeches. Oh, gosh. Luca awoke to find himself face down in bed. He moaned into his pillow. Why would Gran drug him? Or rather, why was she trying to drug Mr. Nuncreed? Shaking the questions from his woozy head, Luca snapped back to the matter at hand. The festival! Where have you been? I, uh... Gran put something in the jam. Yeah, we know. Secret messages for spirit comp co conspirators Not this one. The one intended for Mr. Nuncreed. Put me to sleep. Whoa, ho, ho. Sly Ooh. devil. Oh, sly. I think she's trying to remove him from the equation. He might be in danger. Have you found anything? We looked around, but haven't seen anything odd. Your Gran is nowhere to be found. 
but Mr. Mm -hmm. Nuncrete is just loafing around waiting for the speech. Hey, the last time we were at the festival, we never saw Mr. Nuncrete, did we? I just noticed that. Or at least I think I noticed that. I think I'm being smart here. What speech? Mayor Gus just got up to the podium. Everyone is gathering at the stage. Let's mm -hmm. get moving. Hey, we get to see the speech this time. <clears throat> Look at all the Augustus people. Augustus Valentine nervously wiped his brow. <clears throat> is this thing... Ooh, feedback. Um, hello, Beacon Pines. I'm Augustus Valentine, your mayor, and... I suppose you already knew that. Um, oh yes, before we get started, I just wanted to take a moment to recognize someone who couldn't be here today. This town wouldn't be where it is today without my father, Sharper Valentine. So I thought we could begin with a round of applause befitting such a great man. <laughs> Even that's more than the cold codger de more than the cold codger deserved. Gus cleared his throat and awkwardly <clears throat> loosened his tie. Right. Where was I? William Kerr bounded on the stage with the energy of a preacher at a big tent revival. Hallelujah! Gus uh, Valentine, everyone. He gave Gus a hearty slap on the back and motioned him off the stage. Let's hear for hear it for our mayor. What a great turnout! Oh heck, I didn't prepare anything, but I suppose I could say a few words. Wouldn't be ashamed to waste such a beautiful podium. Mr. Kerr pulled a thick stack oh, of note cards out from his vest. Community, conviction, commitment. These are the things we celebrate at Perennial Harvest. For us, these are the pillars of the bridge to a better tomorrow. But I think it's time to add a new pillar. Change. Oh, I guess we can finally get to see what's under that tarp. Look at all the bunny babies. Oh, they're so cute. Yes, I'm just- I'm looking at the whole crowd, actually. There's Iggy. Our sweet boy, Iggy. Who, who needs a redemption arc. That doesn't involve him dying. And there's Dawn. These people are just too dang adorable, I'm just saying. Change is a powerful thing. It's in ex- Exorable? Exorable? Inexorable, unavoidable, and undeniable. And I am a dadgum thankful for it. Change is the reason we're all together today. It's hard for me to believe that it was only four years ago when fate brought me here. A simple business trip which brought me to a small town which would change my life forever. So four years ago is when he showed up here. So perennial harvest came at least two years after what happened. Mr. Kerr took a moment to survey the crowd. You know what? He wiped away <laughs> a single tear. <laughs> she he did that line really well. I appreciate that. For the second I step from the second I step foot in Beacon Pines, something about this place has held me captive. Sorry, I keep switching my accent for that. You see, change represents opportunity. It represents potential. It was change that helped me re re recognize this potential of this place. I am not reading this well, I'm sorry. To see that the people of this town, despite suffering great loss, still held on to the things that made them special. He thumped the podium to emphasize each word. Community, conviction, commitment, change. Mr. Kerr nodded confidently, <laughs> biting his lip. The crowd was silent, in rapt attention. Fate made a perfect match that day. Nothing is more important to you all than community. And Perennial Harvey's is a community first and foremost. Mr. Kerr methodically made eye contact with each section of the crowd. The only way you made it through the foul harvest was an unshakable conviction. A conviction that is better tomorrow was... A conviction that a better tomorrow was just over the horizon. Perennial Harvest has found, was founded on the conviction that we are that horizon. This festival is a symbol of our commitment to each other. His voice began to build to a crescendo. <clears throat> Allow me to prepare myself. We now walk hand in hand into the future we will shape together. And that is what change is all about. Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink that we will all be making that choice together. Now great is that. Just imagine what we can accomplish. 
Oh gosh. What was that? The crowd began to look around nervously. Don't worry, a little thunder isn't going to ruin this day. Everyone remain calm. Mr. Kerr quickly flicked through his note cards. Where was I? Through all my travels, I have learned one true thing. We're all going to freeze over, because it was a few seconds. It was a little bit of time after the explosion that everything froze over, so I think that's what's about to happen. One always reaps what they sow, and that's the line. We have all planted a lot of good in this town, and so it is with a happy heart that I can proclaim... He raised his hands up to the hand. heavens. Our harvester rate? See? Yep. At that moment, a merciless wall of impossibly cold air ripped through the crowd, instantly freezing everyone and everything it touched. For a man like William Kerr, this was a fitting way for things to end. On a stage, with an entire town frozen in rapt attention for the rest of time. The end. There's that ice again! Whenever I think we're getting close, it comes along and ruins everything! Maybe we should just quit? Maybe you should just close the book, walk away, and never think of me again! I wouldn't no, do that to I, you. I want to know the end of the story, too. I don't too. mean that. We're in this together, girl. We got a little closer this time. We just need to try again. Please. So now we can do a sly interrogation. Let me make sure we haven't unlocked anything else. It's weird that we haven't found anything else for this one. Alright, let's unlock some more charms. Good clop, sly cop. They'd run the classic good cop, sly cop interrogation. Mm -hmm. Let's do this. Luca and Rollo ducked behind a barrel, leading oh, back to her Bex task. Turn. With a few crisp snaps, she roused Mr. Tolliver. Huh? What's going uh -huh. on here? You're uh -huh. you're uh -huh. that uh -huh. Maldia, Maudwell girl. Please call me back. Sorry about all this. Mr. Tolliver looked down and shifted a bit, testing his restraints. It seems there's been a mix-up. You see, I'm down here for the same reason you are. Juniper uh, 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 sent you here? Beck caught herself before letting the surprise manifest on her face. She'd already gotten him to reveal his relation to Grand. This was gonna be easy. You know how Juniper is with her precautions. Operation Sparkplug has us all on edge. I guess she thought you needed some backup. But she uh, sounds uh, a uh, child? Uh, what better way to avoid prying eyes? Who would suspect a kid? I uh, suppose uh, that uh, makes sense. Mr. Tolliver wriggled a bit in his restraints. Oh, I'm so sorry. Beck quickly removed the ropes. And that not had to be uncomfortable. A little, uh, yeah. Uh. But you understand. We never know who to trust in this town. Mr. Tolliver rubbed the growing knot on his forehead. Very true. So it turns out we're both here to... Beck twirled her hand, as if to prompt Mr. Tolliver to finish her thought. Destroy the evidence. Beck shook her head and clicked her tongue. Yep, the old gal is nothing if not thorough. Mr. Tolliver let out an amused huff <laughs> in agreement. She sure uh -huh. is. Can't blame her, though. If anyone were to find out we were going to destroy the source, well, we both know how bad that might be. No one will know anything once I finish cleaning things up down here. Beck was on a roll now, playing Mr. Tolliver like a fiddle. Like a fiddle. You're sure you can finish this up on your own? Juniper trusted me for a reason. You can leave the rest to me. Good. There is one more loose end I'll go work on. Loose end? Oh, it's nothing, really. The other day, I had the radio on scan while restocking the candy shelf. And wouldn't you know it, I intercepted an old phrase in the perennial harvest transmission. An odd phrase. Underground secrets. That's ominous. I think it might be a password, but Juniper dismissed it. She said it wasn't mission critical. What's the password for? We don't know. So we have a password and know where to put it. It's gonna mean something, right? Good thinking. You should probably go work that out. I've got this under control. That's a relief. 
Between you and me, this basement gives me the willies. Heading for the stairs, Mr. Tolliver hesitated and turned to Beck with a puzzled look. She grinned and gave him a peppy wave. Hey, look at her waving. With a shrug, he continued up the stairs, whistling a jaunty tune. Did you guys catch that? Sure did. This whole time, Mr. Tolliver's had a candy shelf. But all he ever sells us is apples. Beck blinked slowly in disappointment. I just did too, actually. <laughs> the password, Rolo. Well, sure, but once things are back to normal, I'll be having a word with Mr. Tolliver about that candy shelf. Fine. In the meantime, I've got an idea. She turned to the table and began tearing small scraps of paper. He said we heard he heard a radio. Ugh. He said he heard a password on the radio. Any good spy transmission is never what it seems. Beck marked each scrap of paper and leaned back. We just need to find the hidden meaning. Um, okay. What's another word for underground? Buried? Covered? Could it be a cover-up? Maybe it's one of those each letter is a number of thingies. So U would be 21. N would be 14. D would be... Ooh! It's an anagram! None creates drugstore! Luca and Beck the looked at heck? with amazement. Rolo, that was incredible. Wait! How the heck did he do that? Wait, what's... Uh, hold on, it's an anagram. How, how does that work again? Uh... Well, it's either that or Cran's nude, nude drug store. Yeah, I think you were right the first time. I forget how anagrams work. Is it you switch up all the letters? Is that what it was? Cause, cause what was the thing he said? Underground tunnel, right? Man, I wish there was a way to look at the words. Look at our pretty tree. There's little birds in the middle. You see them? Anyway. Ah! Wait. No. Not that. Yeah, let's just go back. We'll figure it out as we go. You guys can remind me what a dang anagram is. How did you do that? What can I say? I love sappers. So does my sister. Gravity Falls was like the joy of her life when she first discovered it. Well, more like when he, she started watching it from beginning to end. It was on Netflix, I think. And she was obsessed and still is. Every little hint that there might be a chance that it could possibly come back is just cruel teasing for her. Because, man, she would enjoy it again. Should have seen her when she tried to get her hands on the... Uh... What are the name of those books again? I can't remember. It's like the third book, or whatever, or you know what I mean. Because it had a bunch of new ciphers for her to do. She had literally had a stack of cipher things for every episode, because they'd have a cipher at the end of each episode, and she would just sit and do them every time, or look for different ciphers throughout the episode. She was obsessed. To the drugstore. Wait, this is... You scared me half to death. Sorry. You kids haven't seen Mr. Tolliver around, have you? Nope. He's got me waiting around like the last slice of pie. I swear that man would be late to his own funeral. So this is day before the festival, right? That's where we ended up. Yeah, we're in the day before the festival. Oh. You're late, Augustus. Sorry, sister. I was caught up with work. Work? You? I had a few more details to lock down for the festival. Oh, what do you have to report? What is this insipid town festival really about? I think... Gus looked around nervously. I think Mr. Kerr really does want, just want to do something good for the town. He's actually a pretty nice guy. You should spend some time with him. I didn't pull strings installing you as mayor so you could make friends. Your job is to help me figure out what Kerr and Perennial Harvest's true intentions are with this town. 
we have a responsibility. It's probably gonna be like one of those, it's her, their responsibility to fix the mess that their father made. And they're trying to, you know, make sure the town's taken care of. Like, they're actually good people. This is our father's town. Was. Excuse me? This was our father's town. He's gone, Ares, and he ain't coming back. Father left us with nothing but problems. Mr. Kerr came here and offered to help us. We accepted that help. I we didn't agree to them turning Father's warehouse into a toxic dumping ground. This, that was just a temporary arrangement. The glow can be seen from your backyard. They are dumping their nasty little secrets on us. When this all inevitably goes wrong, who do you think will be blamed? Eris's cry hung in the air. We have a new choice to make now, sister. This town is going to change whether we like it or not. Are we going to choose to be a part of that future, or be forgotten in the past? It's a shame. Father named you Augustus, but you will always be Augustus. Good night, Eris. I'll see you at breakfast tomorrow. Getting late, children. Why are you still sitting out here, you lazy, crazy lady? Knowledge, he spat with a sneer. There exists a gulf between knowing something and being able to do a dang thing about it. Hm. I do hate when the villain makes a good point. And I love the little tidbits they keep giving us through her storytelling. Where are we going? Oh. We were going exactly where we were trying to go. Solomon. Solomon stood proudly at the entrance to the drugstore, holding a brown bag overflowing with black licorice. Hey, Solomon. We're looking for Mr. Nuncreed. Is he still in here? I'm afraid not. Then where'd you get the candy from? You might say we have an arrangement. Solomon shoveled a surprising amount of licorice into his mouth. Sometimes it's the small pleasures in life. Though we might not always have family to rely on. Licorice has never let me down. Well, I can't say licorice will be my first choice, but whatever floats your boat. You can tell a lot about a person by their choice of confection. Oh, yeah, I guess. I like mm. sour gobs. I'm certain you do. I was wondering why Mr. Nungry kept licorice in stock. You must eat enough of it to make it worthwhile. There are many ways to earn royalty. For some, it's as easy as cold enough cash. <laughs> That's a cute kid. I feel like he should have gotten a branch of this tree by now. Well, he's right. It's locked. Probably will. He's probably gonna be a part of the ending, I'm telling you now. There's gotta be more clues. Okay, let's see. Have you ever actually seen anyone actually use this thing? Besides Mr. Nuncreed? No. Beck cupped her hands on the glass to peek inside. This is not a normal phone booth. It's got like a blinky keypad. Why would there be a blinky keypad? Grand Snoods Rug Store! I mean, Underground Secrets! The password! Beck flung open the door, and they all squeezed in. All right, let's see here. Luca cracked his knuckles and entered the letters into the keypad. Underground secrets. <laughs> Sounds like that did something. Great, now what? I guess we... Ah! The inside of the phone booth dropped loose from its shell. Without even the space to panic, they closed their eyes, held their breath, and accepted their fate. So we'll get to see Suddenly, the bottom of this. The chaotic out descent being slowed taken. to an effortless landing. It was unclear where they ended up, but at least it was solid ground. There we are. The air was stagnant and smelled vaguely of chlorine. I knew it. You knew that there was a secret hub full of strange tubes under the phone booth? Of course I did. Didn't I say that? No. 
I definitely thought it. Luca, do you remember when I said how cool it would be if the trans-dimensional conduits from Hank Atomic issue number 12 were real? Rolo, at one point or another, you've said that about every technology ever discussed in Hank Atomic. That's why I'm such a good predictor. It looks like each of these has something written on them. Mining Operations Alpha. You guys have mines here? Not that I know of. This town is all farms and fertilizer. And a series of tubes. Pa always says, you can only trust a miner up to the point when they hit the gold. That is true. You can only trust a miner until they hit that gold. I'm not sure how that wisdom applies in this exact situation. That's the thing about Paul. You don't always realize when he means until it's too late. Perennial Harvest Main Office. Uh, that's where my mom works. What does she do? Science stuff. Is she, is she involved in all of this? We just moved here. How could she be involved? True. Valentine Fertilizer Warehouse. Valentine. Isn't that where you almost got snatched? Alright, this is the version where I almost got snatched. Yeah. Why would Perennial Harvest have a tube going to the old Valentine place? This is starting to feel like something big. Um, this suit has a broken mask. You know, the way you broke it. So, have we found our mysterious warehouse creeper? We've at least found their hazmat suit. And it walks like a nun creed and talks like a nun creed. Let's not jump to conclusions. Just saying. Sorry, give me a moment. I like how it's like, okay, now focus over here. That's a lot of buttons. Stand aside, Earthlings. I've read enough Hank Atomic to know my way around sci fi tech. Rolo's hands hovered over the field of blinking buttons. Eeny, meeny, miny. Rolo, what did you do? Nothing! I didn't even mow yet! Uh oh. What was that? Hide! Hide where? There's nothing but weird tubes down here. Just get back! Yeah, because you didn't even get to. Press it yet. Crud. 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 Awesome. You all need to come with me now. We aren't going anywhere with you. Not until we get some answers. Mr. Underground Secrets. I told them that was an absurd password. But they love anything that makes them feel clever. They who? That's no matter. If I can keep you hidden until after the festival, I might be able to save your skins. You don't, we don't care about our skins. Hold on now. I like my skin. This all stops now, Nun Creed. Joseph waited for a moment in silence. You sound just like him. Who? Walt. You don't get to talk about my dad. You know your father and I were friends back before. He gestured toward the strange tubes. All of this? That's a lie! It's true. I used to bounce on... I used to bounce you on my one knee. What happened? Same thing that always happens. Reality, complications, life. We were a team, Walt and I. An idealistic doctor and a bright-eyed pharmacist. Both hell-bent on keeping, helping folks. So, you were his sidekick? No. Partners. We he helped the patients and I helped him. Yep, total sidekick. Nuncreed let out a growl of a sigh. Luca, I need you to know this. I need someone to know this. One day, Sharper Valentine comes to us, says he's got an opportunity. He's found something he didn't quite understand. And he was willing to pay us both handsomely to help him understand it. And my dad said no. Your father and I both believed in helping people. But the thing I could never get him to understand was... It's a lot easier to help others if you help yourself now and again. Classic side kicked into the Valen plotline. Walt loved being righteous almost more than loved his family. He was 
was wrong about one thing, though. When he begged me not to take Valentine's offer, he said, Joseph, if a person says yes one time to Sharper Valentine, he'll make sure they keep on saying yes to him until the day he's gone, dead and gone. He shook his head wistfully. Sharper's long gone, but he's still got me saying yes. Is there a point to the sob story? Not really, no. Just an old man trying to delay what needs doing. Nuncreed took a menacing step towards the children. I tried to keep you safe. I tried to keep you and Juniper out of this. But you forced my hand. Luca began to laugh. What? You really don't know. My grand isn't out of this. She's been scheming right under your nose. Juniper? Seems like she's planning on crashing the town's party. She's going to disrupt the festival? Why would she? The color drained from Nuncrete's face. How does she know? Apparently she knows a lot of things. What? Let's just say this isn't the only underground lair we've busted into today. And honestly, hers is way cooler. She's got maps and explosives and bad intentions, man. Nuncrete grabbed Luca by the shoulders. His eyes were frantic. You need to tell me what she's doing to do right now. She doesn't understand what she's messing with. I, uh... Tell me now! She's in danger, boy! I don't know. She had a map with a mark on the fountain in Town Square. The fountain? But why would... A jolt of realization struck Mr. Nuncrete. She's about... She knows about the source? What the heck is the source? If she tries to destroy the source, it could catalyze and... She's going to freeze us all. You all need to run. Run where? And away. As far away from this town as you can get. Head west and don't look back. That did not go how I expected. So... We're totally following him, right? Totally. See you on the other side. You good? Yep. I love this town. Dang! Chapter 8. The Cold Hard Truth. So it is... Grand quote. That is going to cause that freeze to happen. But she doesn't seem to realize that's what she's doing. Sorry, I just put up, like, new lights around my room, and they look freaking awesome. And the one string of lights I have goes between different, like, red, blue, and green, and some of the middle colors. And it's blinking off my my doll. It's called a Three-Eyed Eskimo Baby. Um, if you look that up online, you'll find my sister's dolls, and they are super cute. And I have a collection of them sitting above my computer. And one of them has neon-colored eyes, and the lights are bouncing off of it and looking so cool right now. I just have to look up and like, ha, <laughs> he looks awesome right now. Definitely check out those dolls, because she makes every single one with love, and I personally am a huge fan. Apparently I'm not her biggest fan anymore. The little kid just took that title from me one day. Um, <laughs> but yeah. At least I get to be the one who has the uh, one the only one that exists, puppy three-eyed Eskimo baby. Not three-eyed Eskimo puppy. And I get to keep that. Haha. <laughs> Beck leapt up, allowing the suction to yank her into the dark. Dimness eclipsed around her like the shutter of a camera, as she seemed to cover great distance in mere moments. Her only points of reference were glints of upcoming turns, which approached with frightening speed, only to carry her gracefully along. Think about those, like, suction tubes that have always confused me, or rather, I see how that logic doesn't work, is that how the heck are you supposed to breathe when you're in those things if it's a suction? You cannot breathe while you're in a suction, not not one that strong. You could pull your whole she body the through. the distant echoes of Rollo's glee. <laughs> Once she stopped fighting against it, the ride was impossibly smooth. Yeah, the fact that it's that smooth, you would not be able to breathe in that. Just saying. Sudden, oh. As if minutes had passed in an instant, light blazed oh. into view. Wait a minute. How does the freeze 
No, I was thinking of something else, actually. Never mind. Which tunnel did we just go through, actually? Oh, it was the source. That's right. A burst of wintry air snuffed across her face, and she was flung out into the cold. Mm -hmm. Man, he got far ahead of us. That was intense. Yeah. I think I might have parted with some fluids in there. Any idea where we are? Yeah, but we were behind you, dude. Somewhere cold. Doesn't look like it got on any of us. I didn't feel like we traveled that far. So where did it all go? Dude! This place sucks. Why would anyone even want to blow something up out here? Only one way to find out, I suppose. We gotta catch up to Nuncreed. I think he went this way. Oh, I just realized something. That map of Beacon Pines is of the old Beacon Pines. So that's why the source is on there and they're gonna blow it up. It's not in the literal fountain of the new town. It's just something I just considered. It just came to my brain. This looks familiar, yeah. Maybe we can clear off the snow. No time. Nuncrete's getting away. We already know. Okay, this is starting to feel really familiar. I may not be the most well-versed on all things Beacon Pines, but this does look like some sort of frozen replica of town. Oh, I got it. It's so obvious now. Mr. Nuncrete is an alien. Rolo. Stick with me here. His species can only live in sub-zero temperatures. Oh boy, here we go. The source is their base camp dimension, so naturally they keep it cold. We found it by traveling through those metallic wormholes back there. The final objective? Kill us all and shapeshift into Beacon Pine citizen of their choosing. You never really had me. But you very much lost me there. You, you get used to it. We should keep moving. Yeah, last time we were here was... Oh. As they rounded the corner to the frozen town square, they spotted Mr. Nungreed inching cautiously toward a pit at its center. He held his arms out gingerly, as if approaching a beast in the wild. Oh boy. I guess we get to see the explosion of ice for ourselves. Upon closing the distance, Luca recognized what Nungreed was after. Graham stood confidently at the edge, one arm outstretched over the abyss. Nearby, a wheelbarrow had been emptied out. She held a lit torch, which flickered in the bitter wind. Juniper, I don't know what you think you're doing, but I assure you this is not going to solve anything. If you drop that, we're doomed. You've doomed this whole town. Oh, it wasn't me who doomed this town. I've been watching you, Joseph. I know what you've done. You and your co-conspirators. Graham? What's happening? Luca, you and your friends need to leave right this moment. Mr. Nuncree turned back toward the kids. Desperation in his- Listen to your grandma, Luca. This is between me and Juniper. Rolo and Beck held steadfast in awe. Luca approached closer. Mr. Nuncree spun back toward Graham. His voice going louder. You've got it all wrong, Juniper. Just hand over that torch. You don't understand what you're doing. How could I possibly trust you to do the right thing? Walt told me everything. He trusted you and you betrayed that trust. Luca, did you know that this man's entire life is a lie? If it weren't for him, your father might still be alive. Mr. Nuncreen winced with anguish. His voice hardened. That's not true. They both now yelled. Not to each other, but at fate itself, making their peace with long-held burdens. The wind howled with encouragement. Walt was like a brother to me. He just had different ideas about how to affect change. Very convenient that your way just happened to lock line your pockets. Now that's not fair. They menaced at each other, both catching their breath. The moment balanced on a knife's edge. I guess I may have a choice to make. Amid a blur of emotions and memories, Luca's mind flooded with questions. The wind calmed as 
as if to give him the stage. In the stillness, he began to weep or hum. Mm -hmm. Weep feels right, so it should probably be the wrong choice. And in the stillness, he began to weep. It was all just too much. Falling to his knees, Luca whimpered softly. The tears crystallized as they hit the snow. Gran stared at Luca for a moment with warm sympathy, remembering why this was all necessary. It'll all make sense soon, Luca. Then everything can go back to normal. I promise. She stiffened up and yeah, brandished the Yeah, she's not keeping that promise any more than his dad did. You can't hide behind those people any longer, Joseph. Once their precious source is destroyed, we'll see where this their loyalties lie. Fall. Juniper, don't! Ignoring his final plea, Gran flung the torch into the deep darkness. Oh, you killed us all, Gran. She smiled and exhaled in relief. Mr. Nuncreed moaned in resignation. The torch echoed as it ricocheted down the hole, punctuated with a thunderous thud. You see, Joseph, I've learned one very important lesson in life. If you want things to change, then you must be willing to. Before Gran could finish, the ground shook her to silence. Time to freeze. Yeah. Gran only had time to spin around and run to Luca. Her attempt to shield him, an honorable but trifling act. Unflinching love, pitted against an unthinking horror. There was no contest. Her warm embrace froze in an instant. That is where they remain, fixed in place, forever. And so, our story ends on this melancholy scene. In a town brought low by its secrets, sits the frozen statues of a misguided band of meddlers. The end. I see how they did there with the wording. Well, that was dire. On the bright side, we finally figured out where all the ice is coming I from. I kind of figured it out already, sweetie. Now, we just need to find a way to deal with a mystic, unfathomable force of nature. Couldn't be too hard. Let's try this again, shall we? Let's hum. And in the stillness, he began to hum. After the death of his father, Luca had trouble sleeping. Each night, his mother would sit at the foot of his bed and hum a gentle melody. It was the only thing that could calm his mind. The only thing that, however briefly, could make it all seem okay. That melody pervaded every memory Luca had of his mother. Shivering in the raw snow, he began to hum it out loud.
mother. How do you know? I'm so sorry, my Bakuru. Bakuru? The only people who call me that were my dad and your mother. Luca blinked through blurry, watery eyes, trying to see more clearly. He could just make out the impression of a familiar face. He peered across the snowscape at the woman on her knees. Something about her was undeniably his mother. Only smaller, older, changed. Oh crap, she got some of that stuff on her too. Mom? That's right, Buckaroo. Mom! Luca sprinted as fast That's as he could. That's why she looks mother. older. They held each other close, and the cold retreated from their bodies. E Eleanor? I thought you were. Gone? I should have known I would never abandon. You should have known I would never abandon my son. Eleanor looked down at Luca, tightening her embrace in an appeal for forgiveness. How? You're a smart man, Joseph. I thought you'd have pieced it together by now. You were exposed. Mom, I don't understand any of this. What happened to you? Where did you go? Why did you leave me? I never left you. I was always right here, Luca. Why did you lie to me? It tore me up, Luca, but I did it to keep you safe. I thought that getting answers would help us both move on. But the more I discovered, the more I realized the danger we were in. Until perennial harvest was stopped, it was better if everyone thought I was gone. You could have trusted me. These are bad people, Luca. They won't stop until they get what they want. And they don't care who gets hurt in the process. Then what do we do? We have to stop them. Joseph slumped into the cold wet snow. They can't be stopped. This is too big. I tried beating them at their own game. I'm done fighting fire with fire. For the first time in a long time, her voice felt like her own again. No more lies. I see now there's a better way to stop perennial harvest. The cold, hard truth. Luca gazed down at Nuncreed with pity. He looked small. Joseph stared into the snow, as if searching it for answers. Come on, everyone. We've got a party to crash. Chapter 9 The Devil You Know Seven months oh. ago Eleanor Van Horn crept down the maze of sterile hallways under perennial harvest. She stopped in front of the large steel door marked Deep Engineering. No turning back now. She raised a trembling hand. The stolen keycard worked as promised, and the door buzzed open with mechanical efficiency. She was immediately hit with the smell of disinfectant. It was some sort of laboratory. In one corner was a desk covered in papers. Across the room stood a tall metal pod with hoses protruding from its base. She rushed to the desk and began shifting through the piles of papers. They were experiment reports on something called Tempus Liquimen. There were dozens of them. Every one stamped, failed. Eleanor heard the sharp echo of footsteps approaching. She was out of time. Her eyes scanned the room, eventually landing on the strange pod. Muttering a curse under her breath, she dashed over and dove inside. And that is what change is all about! Grabbing the future by the scruff of the neck and making things happen. Change is a choice. I am tickled pink when we all that we will all be making that choice together. How great is that? That man is a liar. Excuse me? I will not. This town has a dangerous secret, and perennial harvests only exist to keep it hidden. Nonsense. They picked up the whole dang town and moved it right under our noses. You're making you aren't making any sense, dear. 
Mr. Kerr addressed the crowd with a sarcastic tone. Imagine such a thing. It's absurd and just plain impossible. They promised they would fix the foul harvest. They told us they would clean this place up. We had, we just had to leave town for a few days. But while they had us evacuated, Miss Hartford, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to. You're afraid of a lot of things, aren't you? You sniveling little worm. This is a growing, this is growing tiresome. A little help, please. Don't you all see? This festival is a sham. An excuse to have the whole town gather in one place. They're planning something awful. I don't know what, but these people are wicked. Don't listen to her. She has absolutely no proof. I am the proof. I'm Eleanor Van Horn. Whispers filtered through the crowd. Well, aren't you just sneaky as Dickens? We all knew Valentine's fertilizer was too good to be true. And now this whole town is paying the price. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so sorry about this disruption. My associates will take this obviously disturbed woman somewhere comfortable. So she can get the help she needs. She's not the one who's disturbed. You too, Tom and Clown. You all know there's something wrong with this town. It was just easy to look the other way. Truth is... That's quite enough, Mr. Nuncreed. Torment dragged on Joseph Nuncreed's face. Yes, sir. <gasps> I just thought of something. Oh, gosh! Solomon is sharper! It They had that serum thing because it was like to do the opposite. It made him a child again. Take them away. Oh, my gosh! I thought it was an affair or something, but no, it, he turned himself into a kid. No, I want them to see this. Oh, the ever tem tempestuous Eleanor Van Horn. You've been quite a thorn in my side. Like a weed that's burrowed in where it doesn't belong. I must confess, you look dreadful. He paused for a moment. Plucking a piece of fuzz from his sweater and discarding it to the ground. Consider yourself in rare company. You've managed to pull one over on me. It won't happen again. I knew you had some sort of plan to disrupt our little party. But alas, I expected something a bit more impressive than incoherent rambling. No matter, your failures are yours to bear. Mr. Kerr. Yes, sir. It's a shame it was cut short, but I thank you for that rousing oratory. I will take it from you. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. You've done quality work for me, William. You can look forward to the re recompense we agreed upon. Kerr gave a bow of deference. The founder, you are most gracious. Gasps rippled through the crowd. Thankfully, we can dispense with the formalities from here on out. Solomon pulled a glass vial from his pocket. In one smooth motion, he So he was trying to contents. create some kind of, uh... I'm gonna call it right now. I'm taking my hand off the butt so last time I get it. He was trying to create some way to make himself young forever and ended up accidentally turning himself into a child. And all that goop was him trying to find a way to make himself an adult again. What was left, anyway. It looks like he may have already found an... Way to fix it. A triumphant smile grew across Solomon's lips. You can all call me Sharper Valentine. His body and face began to contort and expand as he disappeared into a belching green mist. A hushed horror gripped the crowd. Well, so this much of that is story. a story about change. What? No! Ah, oh, so you didn't see that coming. Good. Sharper examined his new hands. Well, this is quite the improvement. Everything looks so much smaller now. Eleanor was right about one thing. This festival was a ruse. I wanted you all to witness my glorious return with your own eyes. You know what this game is actually reminding me of? 
kindergarten. This reminds me of the game kindergarten. Where it's like all these different um, things are happening at the same time. Any one of them leading to a bad thing happening by the end of the day. It's basically the same. I can, I'm like getting that vibe. I noticed, I realized it like last night. Why does everyone look so downtrodden? This is a celebration, people. Maybe it wouldn't help if we set the mood. Mr. Kerr, be a deer and reveal the sign. Ha! Wonderful! Sharker choked out a crude squawk of a laugh. Frustrated grumbles sprinkled through the crowd. Sharper, you malicious man! Malice. Ooh. I'm glad you're back so I can tell you to your face. You destroyed this town. We ain't gonna let you get away with it again. Sorry, this is not the time for audience participation. Some assistance, Mr. Kerr. William Kerr gave a subtle nod to the clipboards. You coward! Does anyone else have something to contribute? A helpless quiet settled over the crowd. I thought so. Did you all truly believe you could be free of me? A town of complete and utter fools? You people should be celebrating my return. You clearly lost without me. And that leads me nicely to the, my children. Daddy? I gave you both the greatest gift a parent can give. The opportunity to prove yourselves in my absence. Squandered. To say I am disappointed would be an understatement. But, uh... Silence, Augustus, an adult is speaking. I don't know which is worse, a son who is completely hopeless, or a daughter with such potential who inevitably lets me down. Eris, you fail me with an admirable consistency. Thankfully, I was counting on it this time. Father, I... Have you been wasting time? Have been wasting time, my dear. What have you accomplished? I have focused on cementing our legacy. Legacy? Who needs a legacy when you can just live forever? But what about... It's all right, kiddo. I'm afraid you suffer from a complete lack of imagination. There's just no helping it. Now then, where is Joseph? You didn't take the opportunity to slip off, did you? Ah, there he is. Everyone should give him a hand. None of this would have been possible without Joseph. I think you've said enough. Nonsense, the people deserve to know how helpful and loyal you've been. I only did what I did because he left me no choice. Ah, boy. You always had a choice, Joseph. You were simply too weak to take it. No matter. Cheer up. You're about to be rich beyond your wildest dreams. You should follow Mr. Kerr's example. But I found him, he was in a sorrier state than any of you. An aging actor, desperate to recapture his youth. He played his part, and soon he'll be able to play the leading man again. Forever, in fact, if he remains loyal. That goes for all of you. Well, those who haven't already frittered away my goodwill. Bacon Pines is mine again. And I am willing to share its spoils in exchange for absolute loyalty. Are you saying William Kerr was never in charge of Perennial Harvest? Ha! <laughs> you think that puffed up blather skin... Skite? However you say that. Could have accomplished all of this. Dawn, I suppose it's time for your big exclusive. Sharper addressed the crowd with indignant pride. He'd planned this moment for so long that now, at the deed's fruition, it almost felt frivolous. You see, I needed a figurehead to hold things down while I orchestrated my return. Someone to misdirect, lie, and bilk this town for spell. So I invented William Kerr. Take your bow, you've earned it. Mr. Kerr flourished a preposterously elaborate bow. Patrick E. Wait. Oh my gosh, it's the guy who wrote the autobiography about him being the greatest actor ever. Patrick C. Montesquieu, thespian extraordinaire at your service. Founder, I just want to thank you again for this opportunity. It truly is the role of a lifetime. Wait. So this Bill Kerr was Patsy the whole time? Patsy. <laughs> That's funny, I like that. Now that your secret is out in the open, what's to stop this town from rising up against you? Oh, that's the delicious part. 
fear. Thanks to our clipboards, I know what each and every person in this town fears most. And I will make those fear manifest for anyone who steps out of line. The choice is simple. I'm not afraid of you. Ha! The young hero. I've kept a keen eye on you, boy. You and your friends made a habit of disrupting my plans. What a pity. If things would have gone a bit differently, you might have had your moment of triumph. But that's fate for you. You can't do this! Oh, but I can. I have won. I'll never underestimate what a great man can do, given time. And now time is my plaything. Perhaps the most expensive thing I've ever bought. But well worth it. Oh, yeah! Ah, uh, Walt mentioned that about how he hated time because it was the one thing he couldn't control. Ha! Sharper coughed up one final laugh and cracked his knuckles. Enough chit chat. Let's get to work, shall we? Oh boy. And so, Sharper set about remaking the town in his own image. The fertilizer factory soon reopened for business. Sales rose steadily, as more and more farmers across the countryside began to swear by its miraculous properties. Beacon Pines became famous, a secretive town that, for the right price, shared its gifts with all. Gifts that became more and more necessary in a world where winters grew longer and longer. The uh, end. Yes. I gotcha. So... Basically, whatever they're using to create the fertilizer is causing the world to grow colder and colder. Which means people have to buy more and more, and it's kind of just a cycle until the world freezes over entirely. That is interesting. So that connects those dots, at least. This is wrong, but things are becoming clearer yeah. now. You can feel it, mm -hmm. right? We can't let Sharper win. He might just be the key to this whole thing. Let's see. Pyre and I. So let's see where our new choice lies. Right there. I was waiting for that tree to bloom. There was a malice lurking behind those eyes. Was a malice lurking behind those eyes. Like a trap ready to spring. Luca felt the weight of Nuncrete's hand on his shoulder. Something wasn't right. He didn't know why, but something was telling Luca to get out of there. I just want this to all be over. Of course, I'm sure it will all work out soon enough. I should get going. I told Roxy I'd check for Rolo at the treehouse. Luca twisted free of Nuncrete's grasp. Of course. Right, because he's looking for Rolo, because Rolo didn't come back. Luca, you know your dad and I were good friends back in the day. You can come to me with anything. Anything at all. Oh. You guys again. Wait, I have to listen to the lady and hear my fate. He looked down and muttered in a gruff voice. Mama always told me my problems would look smaller once I grew up. But my problems always seemed to grow right along with me. Heavens, I sense big trouble ahead. You don't say. You don't dang say. These festival decorations are a bit humdrum. Now if I were to throw a festival... It would be a thing to behold. I agree this is all more than a little sad. It's worse than sad. It's boring. What if we did a little something to spice things up? I'm listening. You know that festival sign waiting to be unveiled? It would be a shame if someone... The two scurried off, eagerly formulating a plan. Yeah. Change the sign to say Sharper Valentine. Hmm? Identify yourself, please. Nellie Modwell. I work here now. I'm unable to locate you on our staff roll. Oh, I don't officially start until tomorrow. 
Mr. Kerr said I could come in early tonight and get a few things done. Hold, please. Clearance authorized. Thank you. Our harvest awaits. Her moms aren't there during the festival, are they? Whoa! You could get a wrench on to the noggin sneaking up on a guy like that. Don't scare a man while he's junkin', Sonny. Evening, Jeff. Isn't he kind of late to be junkin'? I might as well ask the same thing of you. Find anything good? Bah, never. Ever since perennial harvest moved in, even the trash, the junk is trash. You can learn a lot about a person by looking at what they throw away. With this bunch, it's all shredded paper and coffee cups. Well, I'd better get going. I didn't see nothing if you didn't see nothing. See what? Exactly. You have your thing, dude. I haven't actually tested to see if I could fish for anything new yet. Nope, I cannot. Look at gently at first. Oh, daddy. Rollo? He aired a long holler into the Rolo! woods. you are I hope you're okay Luca felt his eyes getting heavy and plopped into the beanbag he conceded to its lumpy embrace okay let me check real quick eh. once oh, again Luca found himself in a vast black expanse this time he knew exactly where to go. He took a single confident step forward. The world flickered and pulsed. He found himself standing in front of the frigid air of a blazing campfire. The source. He plopped down cross-legged and gazed into the cold flame, waiting. Soon enough, the fire began to die out, popping sporadically, until all that was left was a single ember. Luca stood up and dusted himself off. He plucked the glowing ember from the cold ash, examined it, and slid it into his pocket. A keepsake. The voice of his father spoke behind him. You made me proud, Buckaroo. Luca turned to face him. Dad, what is this place? A warm grin grew across his father's face. A place where everything that has been and everything that could be all wait together. Luca found himself staring at his father's face, trying as hard as he could to memorize every single detail. Wait? For what? Another voice spoke out as Luca's doppelganger stepped forward. That's up to you. Without knowing why, Luca began to weep. Is... is any of this real? Are you real? Luca's father bent down to smudge away a tear. Of course. I'm as real as the part of you that misses me. Luca turned to look at the older version of himself. And you? The doppelganger choked back tears. I'm as real as the part of you that's angry he's gone. Does that make sense? Through his tears, Luca laughed. <laughs> I think so. His father pulled him in for an embrace. Time to go, buckaroo. Luca was startled from his dream by a banging on the floor. Are you in there? A commanding voice rumbled from below. Just as Luca sprang to lock the entry hatch, the door knocked open. Uh -oh. Chapter 5 Dangers Big and Small Lucas stumbled back. He heard the rope ladder creak under significant weight. 
Keeping his eyes fixed on the hatch, he inched backward to the balcony. As his hand grasped the door handle, Luca froze. A large figure clumsily wriggled up through the hole. The heck? Stop right there! Or I'll... Sheesh, I know it's dark and all, but I figured you'd recognize me. Who are you? The large figure cocked oh my its head gosh. inquisitively. He aged himself. Stop now or I'll clobber you with a baseball bat. Whoa, 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 take it easy. Luca, you need to get your ass checked. It's me, Rolo. Nice try, but I know you aren't, Rolo. You're like one of his random uncles or something. Where is he? <laughs> Uncle? Luca, quit messing around. It's me. If it really is you, prove it. Flaming chicken coop, Luca. Luca's a jaw dropped. You probably should give him an older voice if he's old enough to be an uncle. <clears throat> he peered more closely at the man standing in so front of him. So he aged the same way the mom aged, Eleanor. Dang. Something about him was undeniably Rolo, only bigger, older, changed. Oh, what happened to you? When I was running away, I ran some more people in those yellow suits. They grabbed me and dragged me away. What? Where did they take you? Don't know. They threw a bag over my head. It was cold and smelled like a swimming pool. Ew, I think I was underground in an underground lab or something. They made my hands all big and look. Rollo proudly presented his hands to Luca. Pretty sweet, right? I mean, it wouldn't be my first pick for a superpower. But beggars can't be choosers. Rollo, it wasn't just your hands. My feet, too? Thank Paul Maiden. Just made me new shoes. Wait, Luca. Why are you so small? Luca moved to the side and pointed Rollo to his reflection in the balcony window. <laughs> what the? His hands shot up to his face. Ho, oh, Toledo! Rollo, what did they do to you? They made me drink some sort of green crud. Ew. Actually, it wasn't too bad. It kind of tasted like licorice. Of course it did. I passed out and woke up like this. And then I sort of smashed open my cage and escaped. Whoa, you smashed open a cage? Kinda. At least I think I did. It's all a bit of a blur. They had you in a cage? Who are these people? I don't know who did this to you, but we're gonna fix it. Fix it? This is awesome! Well, I'm just glad you're safe now. Luca, you don't need to worry about me. Sure, I got snatched, but look at it this way. I got snatched. I know where snatched people go. We may finally have a lead on what happened to your family. Maybe you're right, but this all seems dangerous. Danger? Ha! <laughs> Rollo shadow boxed a few jabs. I'll take them all on. Back. Wait. Give me one moment. I'm trying to remember the order of which this happens. Oh, because we don't know. Wait, why is it question mark? Oh, because we're on that path, that's why. We haven't finished that path. So that one is if you fight. And no, that's where you... um. Do tickle or strange. So strange leads to us helping him escape. But um, if you do tickle and he runs off, Beck's the one who ends up getting splashed and she runs off. That's when we end up here. So her hair is blue now didn't stay gray. Hey, fellas, what's up? With a yelp, Rollo dove behind Luca. Ah! Take cover! Did I come at a bad time? Who the heck are you? This is Beck. Sorry, something truly bizarre just happened and I need help. I don't know where else to go. So, you're just hanging out here with your large adult friend? Ah, uh, no, this is my buddy Rollo. 
This is your missing friend? One and the same. He seems a little old. I'll have you know this is a recent development. What the heck does that mean? Oh, I'm sorry. You're the one who just showed up out of nowhere. So we'll be asking the questions here. That's fair. How did you find us? Your silly little treehouse? I think you mean our silly little mission control. I hate to break it to you, but your secret path isn't so secret. And I could hear your racket from a mile away. See, Luca? This is why we need to improve security around here. Not now, Rolo. Beck, you said something bizarre happened? Yeah, but... She shot a nervous glance at Rolo. Anything you can see around me, you can see around Rolo. This has been a weird day all around, hasn't it? Yep. Beck's eyes narrowed. Okay, so it all started when I made it back home. My first order of business was to try and salvage my hair. So I dyed it with some stuff from the chemistry set my mom gave me. Okay. Just need to play it cool. And hope no one notices. Notices what? Oh, nothing. I was just... <sighs> Come over here and let me have a look. Oh, honey. What in the world did you do to your hair? I just kind of felt like a change. This is going to take forever to grow out. You were the one who said that change was a good thing, right? I was talking about your mother's new job. I was talking about us moving. Well, I guess I just took the lesson hard. Ilona tried to put on a smile. But I forget. I, before I forget, I came up here to tell you that Nellie had to go to work. Tonight? Her and Mr. Kerr decided it would be good for her to get some things done before tomorrow. That Kerr guy seems like a grade-A creep. Beck! He is! Him and his weird cult of personality. We are not going to ruin this job for Nellie. It means too much to her. Oh, I know exactly how much it means to her. It means enough for her to exile her daughter to this podunk town. This place sucks. The people are weird. You just don't know them yet. It's always cold. We're in the mountains, you'll get used to it. I can't even pick up a single decent station on the radio. It's all banjo music and farm reports. You know I grew up in a town not that different from this one. Is that why you're better at talking to plants than people? Okay. So here's what we're going to do. First of all, you're grounded. What? In the morning, I'll have Nellie come and see what we can do about fixing your hair. You need to look presentable for the festival. But not another peep. She sighed, and after a moment, looked down at Beck sympathetically. I know moving is hard, honey. But that doesn't mean you have to make yourself miserable all the time. Other people seem to have that covered for me. Oh, and if you decide to rebel about by dyeing your hair more... She flashed a sly grin and tussled Beck's hair. I'll just shave it off for you. Think of how rebellious you'll look then. Very funny. Thank you. Good night, sweetie. Good night, Mom. Wait, wait, wait. First of all, this town does not suck. Second, you need help because you got grounded. No. I'm sorry, you got into trouble. It's my fault your hair got screwed up in the first place. Don't worry about it. I actually kind of like this look. Great, we can get back to this, my story now? The next part is the important bit. I had this radio I upgraded with my mom, and I was too angry to sleep. So I tried to dial in something worth listening to. Mr. Kerr, are you there? Mr. Kerr? Yes, I'm busy. What is it? Apologies, I have the founder on the line. Patch him through immediately. One moment. Hello, sir. It's so nice to hear from you. Skip the pleasantries. What's your report on our new lead research of deep engineering? Nellie Modewell. Modewell seems nicely integrated. Seems to be integrating nicely. At this very moment, she's working to help us meet our deadline. She offered to work overtime before I even had a chance to suggest it. Excellent. And you have faith that she'll, she's capable of finishing the work left by her predecessor? Her work must be complete before the festival. I'll make sure she stays day and night till it's accomplished. Good. You know how I feel about loose ends. Yes, sir. Once she has finished the work, we need to make a determination regarding her. 
long-term prospects in the company. Immediately, sir? I usually have more time to fully bring people into the fold. We are in the end game, though. After our failures with Miss Dr. Prescott, I can't afford to make any take any risks. Of course, sir. No loose ends, sir. Once she finishes the work, she will either leave the office completely committed to perennial harvest, or she won't leave at all. Perfect. Sir, if I might suggest, maybe we should delay, just for a bit. Oh? It's just, we seem to be rushing to hit this festival deadline, and rushing into things has caused some... issues in the past. I see. Please understand that I just want what's best for you. I'm eternally grateful for all that you've done for me. Beelatze, make this very clear for you. I brought you in to make things run smoothly, not to have opinions. Of course, sir. Jim Alphil, you're only a few days away from having everything you ever dreamed of. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Whoa. Yeah. Just so we're clear, when they said loose ends, they were talking about murder, right? Like actually killing someone? Capital murder. Luca gave Rollo a quick elbow to the ribs. Who is this founder? I was hoping you guys would know. Nah, as far as we know, Kerr is the top banana at perennial harvest. He sounded scared of this founder guy. So we have an even topper banana on the field? What the heck is my mom caught up in? Has she talked about the job much? Not really. She said she was going to come in and continue the work of someone she respected. Luca, do you think that body at the warehouse was... The person Beck's mom came to replace? That would make sense. Beck, it seems that Nick Nagnelli's predecessor got, um, loose-ended. I'm getting that impression. So, we need to get your mom out of there before the festival happens. That's two days away. Won't you just come home after work? That creep on the radio said they were going to hold her there until then. So she's not coming out, so we gotta go in and get her. Beck flicked a large sheet of paper out of her pocket and slammed it on the floor. Maybe this will help. Yeah, blueprints? Well, it's really just a welcome map for my mom's PH orientation day. But it shows the layout. Sure looks like blueprints to me. Look, here's the reception area. There's a big room for ma marked founder's office. It even has exit marked. Guys, guys, guys. We have a deadline. We have an objective. We have blueprints. You realize what this is, right? Rollo started to wiggle with excitement. I think we're heisting! This is officially a heist. This is so Chapter cool. Six. I love this so much. Rollo is a big boy now, and it's a little uh, hilarious to me. The oh my gosh, this game is wonderful. Ah, oh, man, it's so wonderful. I went over my time again, man. I don't understand how any YouTubers stick to a time. I mean, I did it for, what, Henry Stickman? That was a lot easier than this. You can't help but get dragged into this, like, heavily. But I'm going to stop here. Thank you all so much for joining me. We will go into Chapter 6, The Heist, in the next episode. For now, thank you for joining me. Please leave a like and subscribe so you can continue to be here for the next chapter. And I'll see you guys next time. This is Sonic Ranger, signing out. Bye!